Hi everyone, so we've made it to the second pack of the Delta pack. Um, right, let's have a look then. So we're looking at correlation and regression and sampling. So bivariate data. So it's kind of like, if you look, look at the word bivariate, it's two variables. And if you look, it comes in a pair of X and Y. So it's just scatter graphs. So, you know, all nice and easy. So it says correlation describes the relationship between variables X and Y. So we've got a positive correlation as one variable increases, the other one increases. Uh, it says it's got a weak positive correlation and a strong positive correlation. We used to say, like, if you can, what, if you can draw an oval around it, then you know you've got correlation, but the wider the oval, the weaker the correlation, and the thinner the oval, the stronger the correlation. Same with negative, one goes up, one goes down. So I've got like a strong negative correlation, and I've got a weaker negative correlation. So if there's no correlation, there's no linear pattern. Now we only do linear, we only kind of look at kind of straight lines that we're aiming towards, not curves or anything. So it says, if you're asked to interpret the correlation in context, you must specifically refer to what X and Y represent. That's really important. You can't just say positive correlation. You've got to say there's a positive correlation between the number of days it rains and the number of times I would happen. Right, so let's have some questions then. So the data below shows a temperature of nine cakes and how long uh, they have been removed from the oven when the temperature was recorded. So we can draw it on our scatter graph diagram, which is quite a scatter graph. So I'm just going to pause it and get the calculator up. Hang on. So to save time, I've entered the numbers. So in list one, I've got the time. And in list two, I've got the 10. So I've entered the numbers. We've got F1 to graph. And then just graph one, F1 again. And you can see from the graph that you've got a negative correlation. There. So B says to describe it. So it's a negative correlation. There. C says to interpret it in context. So that's, what does it actually mean then? So we've got a temperature of nine cakes and how long they've been removed from the oven. Um, so you kind of think that makes sense, doesn't it? The longer that the cakes are outside of the oven, the, the cooler they're going to get. So we can say like, as the time outside the oven Increases, comma, the temperature of the cakes decreases. It's very factual. So that time's increasing, but the temperature is decreasing. Don't try and elaborate on it, just kind of say it as it is. So we'll look on the next page. So we've got the product moment correlation coefficient, PMCC. Um, so we've got like, you know, you go through school and you just say it's weak or it's strong, it's positive, it's negative, it's no. But there's a way of kind of getting a value for it, quantifying it. And that's using the, the R value. So the idea is that my scale goes from minus 1 to 0 to 1, where 1 is perfect positive correlation, and minus 1 is perfect negative correlation, and a 0 is no correlation. So this is your R value. It's actually in your calculator. I could go back and show you where it is. Looks like if I go back, uh, go back again, and I do calculator, 
and I do rank reg for regression and F1 a couple of times, it gives me the R value as minus 0.925. And that's beyond what we need to do, which is stupid, because I calculated it for us. But there we know that that is a strong negative correlation because the R value is minus 0.925. But we don't need that, it's bonkers. I calculate it, does it? Why not? So we've got an R value that goes between minus 1 and 1. So 1 is perfect positive correlation, minus 1 is perfect negative correlation, 0 is is no correlation. So this is really no linear correlation because this works for straight lines only. Right, so let's try and match them up then. Uh, so we've got very strong, almost perfect, but so I'm trying, trying to do the extremes. So the 0.94 will match with the very strong, almost perfect positive. So the minus 0.75 is the worst negative, so that's going to be the strong negative there. Then a very weak negative is going to be the minus 0.2, and the 0.5 is positive. Different books need different bandings for what they call, because they might have very weak, weak, moderate, strong, very strong. Whereas we just tend to go with like weak and strong. So if you read up on it, there'll be different bandings for different R values, but we just kind of keep it quite simple. Really. Right, so let's have a look at this question then. So it says, Dr. Hannah collected a random sample of 25 from a male patient, so it's between 55 and 65 and recorded their height, weight, and waist measurements. Uh, she asked her assistant lady to calculate three PMCCs based on it. So for each of the values, state whether it's correct, probably correct, probably incorrect, or definitely incorrect. So we've got two definitely's and two probabilities. So for A, uh, so you've got a positive correlation between height and waist. So yeah, so probably correct. So I guess if it's larger in one dimension, it'll be larger. Got 1.16 as a PMCC, so that's like definitely wrong, isn't it? We know that the R value lies between plus or minus 1. That's it. And then minus 0 0.538. So if you think, that's kind of saying that your waist gets smaller as your weight goes up. So that's probably, uh, probably incorrect. So correlation and causation. Um, so we've got three scenarios. So the daily temperature and the number of ice cream sold is a value of 0 0.88. Uh, so what warmer will cause people to have ice creams makes sense. So that's causal. So that we're okay with people. Who, Oh, well, it's hot. You can see that one, can't you? Right, the next one says uh, consumption of cheese and the number of civil engineers. Now, that is actually, it does work, but it's not true, is it? So, um, that's non causal. I'm just very aware of the time, so I've got to kind of get through this in 30 seconds. The number of police stations and the number of supermarkets. Um, hmm. Random, really, because you can argue that there is, but it's, it's, it's linked to something else. It's the size of the city that it's linked to, and not each other. So these are linked to the size of the city. I can see I'm going to run out of time for this last little bit. Let's have a read of that.